is September 8, 1998. We're in St. Louis where the visiting Chicago Cubs lead the hometown Cardinals 2 to nothing in the bottom of the fourth inning. There's plenty of game left, but if you look around at this packed out crowd on their feet, you would think the Cardinals were headed to the World Series. I don't see a free hot dog promotion or a t-shirt giveaway in sight. So why the hell are these fans so hyped? It's only one way to find out. We gotta rewind. This episode of Rewinder is presented by T-Mobile, America's largest 5G network. These fans in Bush Stadium have a chance to witness history. While it looks like they're applauding this beefy red-haired dude for his impressively large arms, they're waiting to see what he can do with those muscles. With this at bat, Mark McGuire could become the new leader for most home runs in a single season. It's a record that hasn't been broken in nearly four decades, but if anyone can do it, Mark's the guy. 61 homers is a magic number that McGuire's chasing, set by Roger Maris in the early 60s. Over the years, a few players came within reach of toppling Maris, but McGuire's been the most consistent. During his rookie year in 87, Big Mac smashed 49 dingers with the Oakland Athletics and continued to display his superb hitting power during his time in the Bay. McGuire's slugging prowess, alongside his just as shredded teammate Jose Canseco, earned the two the nickname the Bash Brothers. But after several postseason shortcomings and a deteriorated relationship with his brother by bashing, McGuire soured on the A's entering the 97 season. Oakland traded him in July, and despite a season of uncertainty, McGuire still managed to mash 58 homers. Besides McGuire, MLB began to experience a sudden spike in elite home run hitters, leading journalists to believe Maris's record would be cooked sooner rather than later. McGuire was the poster boy to do damage. Before the 98 season, he graced the cover of Sports Illustrated's March issue with the headline, Get Ready for a Slugfest, where the publication gave the slugger 4-1 odds to make history. Which wasn't surprising. The dude excelled at crushing pitches to the upper decks of stadiums to the point where I wouldn't be surprised if he'd been created in the lab. Now, numerous people did believe that lab work came with steroid injections. Throughout his career, McGuire suffered numerous injuries that spectators attributed to his gigantic frame. Big Mac had haters, but insisted that a guy could have biceps the size of someone's head all by simply putting in hard work. Despite all that hard work he put in, McGuire had often found himself on the DL. Because of that, SI gave King Reefy Jr. slightly better odds to surpass Maris. Either way, they expected dingers. Come season time in April, McGuire and Griffey both dropped bombs at a rapid pace and found themselves tied at 15 home runs in mid-May. Although by Memorial Day, not only did Big Mac set himself apart from the kid, he was on track to obliterate the record. Journalists constantly wanted updates on McGuire's thoughts as he got closer to Maris, but no matter how much they pressed, he didn't seem interested. It's not that he wasn't confident. McGuire didn't feel comfortable comparing himself to baseball legends with so much time left in the season. The pressure and attention of the chase clearly began to weigh on him. He became a traveling sideshow where thousands of fans flocked to stadiums early just to see him in batting practice. Hell, even opposing managers stopped what they were doing to watch. During a June road game, McGuire compared people swarming his BP to feeling like a caged animal. For being so great at something that brought excitement to others, Mark didn't seem to find much joy in the chase. But that didn't mean he stopped demolishing pitches. McGuire still leads the league in homers, and with this at bat, he could make history. If Big Mac isn't thrilled about the chance to put his name in the record books, this dude in right field would be more than happy to take his place. Okay, I know in 1998 there is room for advancement in picture quality, but I'm positive that's not Ken Griffey Jr. Right fielder for the Cubs. Right fielder for the Cubs. Ah, that's Sammy Sosa. But what does he have to do with any of this? In terms of people in the conversation that break Maris's record entering the 98 season, Sosa was an afterthought. That is, when he was even thought of at all. Sorry, Sammy. 
Chicago obviously valued him enough to extend him to a lucrative deal the previous season, but he wasn't known as a reliable hitter. That's putting it kindly. Considering journalists described him as a hitter who swung at anything with a sloppy plate approach that led to easy outs. Damn. By the end of May, the home run chase started to take shape and Sammy was barely in the picture. He showed flashes of power, but it would take a shit ton of long balls for him to catch up to McGuire's double-digit lead. Quantifying the exact amount that equals a shit ton varies by person, but setting the record for most home runs in a month certainly met the quota. Sammy's spectacular month catapulted him into the national spotlight, expanding the home run chase to a three-man race. Slamming Sammy attributed his sudden surge to finally finding peace within the stresses that came with the game. Working with new hitting coach Jeff Pentland, Sammy also benefited heavily by making severe changes to his swing mechanics. While McGuire shied away from all the attention the chase brought, Sammy thrived in the spotlight. He crushed balls and bounced out of the batter's box as if he was setting up to do a salsa move. He played to the crowd, giving curting calls after home runs, even during road games. Unlike McGuire, who spoke fearfully out of respect for baseball's past, Sosa talked freely about the record. Growing up as a shoeshine boy in the Dominican Republic, Sosa worried about providing for his family. He didn't have time to idolize baseball stars. He'd been through the trenches and thought there were more serious issues going on in the world than a home run chase. So why not revel in the moment? which is exactly what he kept doing. As Sammy kept slapping balls, Griffey ran out of gas, and the chase became the Maguire and Sosa show. It's like they taunted each other with deep bombs. By mid-August, Sammy did the unthinkable and caught Maguire. He went from the darkest of horses to journalists believing he would be crowned the new single-season home run king. Although, Sammy didn't see it that way. He treated McGuire respectfully and believed he would be the first to cross 61. McGuire viewed Sosa in the same light. He didn't see the chase as a competition between the two and only focused on what he could do at the plate. As they entered the final stretch of the season tied at 55, it was clear there would be a new leader by the season's end. No matter their nonchalant attitude of, oh, you broke the record first, someone had to do it. And with this booming St. Louis crowd cheering him on, looks like Big Mac will be the one. You can feel the energy through the screen, but this moment goes far beyond St. Louis. More than anything, MLB desperately needed this. For a sport that prides itself on being America's pastime, MLB hasn't had this many eyes on it in quite some time. A few years ago, players went on strike and shut down everything entirely. In the seasons that followed, the league struggled to keep fans interested. To get butts back in seats, it took a couple of beefy boys hitting moonshots as they pursued history. But it just wasn't inside stadiums. The hype of the chase was inescapable. Nike capitalized on the moment and ran ads with the tagline, Chicks Dig the Long Ball. The commercials featured jealous Cy Young award-winning pitchers Greg Maddox and Tom Glavin attempting to strengthen their hitting skills because Mark got all the attention from the ladies. Hi, Tom. Chicks dig the long ball. Sluggers got all the love. Nothing could slow down people's hunger for homers. Although, there were some hiccups. In mid-August, a reporter from the Associated Press published a piece about McGuire's use of Androstino Dion after spotting the supplement in his locker. The testosterone-producing pill had been banned in other sports, but was clean to use in MLB. It's why McGuire kept the pills in plain sight and forcefully defended himself, saying he's only doing what every other player in the league does. Well, maybe not everyone. But instead of condemning Mark, most media members took their anger out on the reporter. How could that asshole try to label Mark as a cheater when he's done nothing but provide good, clean entertainment for the whole nation? Big Mac should have stuffed that nerd in his locker right then and there when he questioned him. Baseball was so back, damn it, and no dude who scribbled on paper could kill that. Whew, I apologize. I blacked out there for a second. 
It reached a point where major networks found themselves scrambling to air games so the nation could keep track. As he approached Maris, McGuire even relaxed, knowing he had a duty to fulfill for everyone taking notice. The chase swallowed the league whole and turned any other major story into a footnote. Several of the MLB's top players changed teams. The Yankees looked poised to set a record of their own. Pushing 40, Ricky Henderson swiped bags like a youngin, but none of it mattered. Home runs were all the country cared about. When they went into September Tide, Mark took off from Sammy, but thanks to the serendipitous scheduling of MLB, one of the two could break the record while the other watched. As Big Mac stood one home run behind tying Maris, the Cardinals were set to face off against the Cubs in the two-game series. In anticipation, the league went all out and had the home run heroes ride golf carts together to joint press conferences where they played off one another like some weird buddy cop comedy. It was odd to see division rivals so chummy, but the promotion clearly worked. In the first of the two games, besides the sold-out crowd at Bush Stadium, ESPN drew its most viewers for a baseball game in the network's history. During the game, McGuire made his own history, putting himself in the record books next to Maris. In this game tonight, though, McGuire can stand alone. Sitting three homers behind Mark, Sammy needs to have a hell of a game tonight to make things interesting. But even then, Big Mac just needs one. The pressure is on him. McGuire got his chance in the bottom of the first inning, but grounded out. Sosa's having a decent game, but a single and grounding out in the third don't help his chances. The Cardinals went three up and three down in the bottom of the third, and with McGuire slotted to come back up the next inning, that brings us here. With one swing, Big Mac could dethrone Maris. He didn't set out to make history, but he grew to understand the magnitude of what he could achieve and what it meant for the sport. Not a single soul predicted Sosa would be in the mix, but he shined when the lights were bright and helped capture the nation's attention alongside McGuire. The lead up here was almost tainted with silly accusations, but we can't control the past or future. So let's focus on the present. Welcome to a moment in history. And let's just pretend nothing else happened after that game. No court rulings or anything. Just good, clean baseball. If you enjoyed that video, we got plenty more for you to check out. Now hurry to like and subscribe. Get out of here, I say.